communication tools for evangelism is the topic for today in COM sessions number nine. For this, we have special presentations with special guests like Felicia Darus from the Center of Online Evangelism. She's going to share precisely this topic on digital networks for evangelism. Then we have Karina Rodriguez from UNADECA, the Adventist University in Central America. She works in the marketing department and she's a specialist in design and advertising. The topic that she's going to share here in Come Sessions. Last but not least, we have Professor Jorge Andre Diaz. He is professor in the University of Montemorelos. He has a master's degree in film, in cinematography, the topic that he is going to share with us today, Film for Evangelism. Welcome to Come Sessions number nine. Can you guess what happened in the last 60 seconds online? One million people logged onto Facebook. 3.8 million searches were made on Google. 4.5 million videos were viewed on YouTube. 18 million text messages were sent. And 347,000 users were scrolling on Instagram. That's a lot of activity. But I'm curious to know how many of those people read a blog or watched a video that told them more about Jesus. With so much online activity, our church needs to employ digital evangelism methods. Digital evangelism is strategically using internet, mobile, and social media platforms to meet the needs of others and share the gospel. Making use of digital evangelism means to further the gospel work, and more church members can be missionaries. Adventist presence online will be stronger. The statistics are shocking. There are approximately 7 billion people in the world. 4 billion use the internet, and 3 billion are on social media. Digital evangelism helps us spread the gospel into all the world at a rate we never could have imagined before. Moreover, it connects us to the younger generation. Let's explore how you can begin incorporating these methods into your strategy. Social media. If your church uses social media, remember to create content to engage your audience. Social media is not broadcast media. It's about relationships and interaction. Your ministry's social media platform should seek to be a two-way relationship where you give your audience a chance to respond to you. A few years ago, a Facebook user sent a message to a church requesting Bible studies. The message wasn't seen until a year later. The opportunity was missed because the church allowed its Facebook page to lie dormant. Remember to treat your online audience with care. Search engine optimization. The first thing someone does when they hear about Seventh-day Adventists is to search for us on Google. That's exactly what one couple did after visiting a Seventh-day Adventist church one Sabbath morning. In their quest to find out more about our faith, they Googled us and the results were so negative that the couple never returned to church. To ensure that these online seekers find accurate information about who we are, ministry leaders, members, and pastors must learn to practice proper SEO. SEO or search engine optimization is an ongoing process to help internet users find your church or ministry's website. Using proper headlines, creating relevant content, building your social networks, and analyzing your website are all a part of SEO best practices. Learn how SEO can improve your ministry's presence by downloading our free SEO guide. Content creation. Do you remember when we only had a few options to share information? Newspapers, radio, and television. Today, we have blogs, downloadables, eBooks, graphics, online small groups, articles, newsletters, vlogs, e-magazines, and the list goes on. This means that your church or ministry doesn't have to stick to one old way of sharing the gospel. Start a YouTube channel about healthy vegan cooking, record a podcast, reviewing Christian biographies, produce videos sharing Bible stories for kids, write blogs on how your church members can be entrepreneurs, design an infographic explaining Bible prophecies, create graphics with the most epic spirit of prophecy quotes, publish an ebook for young Christians, launch an e-magazine specially written for married couples. There are so many forms of content that you can create for your church's website. 
Besides the About section, Ministry tab, and Leadership Team bios, what else does your church website offer? By employing content creation skills into your church's online strategy, online users will see that your website is relevant. Keep your church website up to date. Events that happened months or years ago should not be on the front page. Instead of stock photography, use quality photographs of your church's actual members. The look and feel of your website is very important. Replace outdated styles for more modern and attractive display. Online small groups. This is by far one of my favorite digital evangelism methods. Some time ago, I started reading a book for Christian singles. As I read, I wanted other singles to join in. But how would I accomplish this when so many of my friends are scattered all around the world? Online small groups. Every Friday evening, we logged onto our free online video conferencing platform to pray, discuss the week's chapter, and share what God was teaching us. We had group members from the Bahamas, Costa Rica, the United States, Canada, Barbados, Panama, and other countries. Your church or ministry can adopt the same methods. Are there young people who want to learn about managing their finance in a biblical way? Host an online small group. Invite your website visitors to join your small group. Ask married couples to come together online. By creating these digital communities, you extend the reach of your church beyond the four walls. Unfortunately, many unbelievers are uncomfortable walking into a church building, but by inviting them to a digital community, you give them an opportunity to discover what the body of Christ is truly like. And as you continue to minister to them, they may feel more inclined to be a part of the physical community. 1 Samuel 14, 14 says that the Lord devises means so that his banished ones may return to him. Ellen White wrote, let every worker in the master's vineyard study, plan, devise methods to reach the people where they are. She said, Christ did not follow one method. He sought to gain the attention of the multitude. This means that if we are to follow the methods of Christ, we too should employ various methods to share the gospel. The Center for Online Evangelism is a ministry created to help you and your church to build a powerful online presence. Get all the resources you need to implement online evangelism strategies at your church. Download our online missionary guide, sign up for newsletters. You can also attend free webinars. In the spirit of the Great Commission, go online and preach the gospel to the entire world. If you review well, in the life of Christ, you will find the best advertising strategies to achieve an effective evangelism. Christ's message in the first place was relevant to the point that he said he was not necessarily going to bring peace. Christ also tropicalized his message. That is, if he was going to speak with shepherds, he would clearly use sheep in his message. Christ also used strategic quotes with the intention of being remembered. Even today, we remember the phrase, Be not afraid, only believe. Jesus also linked in people's daily lives the Samaritan woman. For example, in how he told her about living water. She understood the message in a perfect way. Now, I want to share with you four important tools that you can use when doing advertising and having an effective evangelism. You will find these four tools answering four questions. Question number one, think about the audience. What do you have to take into account? Think about what they like, how old they are, their habits and practices. Are they married or single? If they go to college, or maybe they never went to college. All this will be key when communicating with them. If possible, draw them and even give them a name. So when you go to prepare for advertising, you may think you have them face to face and that way you can have a real talk. Question number two how and when to talk to them. Here you must consider which are the means that you are going to use, either traditional media or digital media. This is really important. If you have already defined your audience, you will know where you are going to find them. 
Question number three. This is key for you to communicate with them in a better way. What are you going to inform them? Are you going to give some news? Do you want to share an image? Or maybe you want to bring them to church for an evangelistic campaign or for an event? This is key when communicating with your audience. Question number four, but not less important. What are you offering them? Maybe a solution to a problem? I explain a little better. Let me explain a, a little better. Let's say you want to communicate to a single young people and you are going to bring a special guest to the church who is going to talk about singleness. Let's say that's the problem they have because you have to attract singles. You can come up with a phrase to link with them. It can be, do you want to find the love of your life? We want to invite you to such a place. Then you give them the necessary information and this will make them bond with you and you can carry a communication with the intention that their daily life can change and you can generate something in them. I want to give you two last tips. Remember that the concept is extremely important. In each strategy, you are going to use to try to conceptualize your information. For example, do you want to talk about hope? Think of an, obj an object or concept that you can make people think about it. When you create a concept, you link with the right people and also allow them to remember you. Talking about hope, for example, you may think on the hope that a lifesaver can reflect. Okay, you can then include a lifesaver in the communication you will prepare. So, when they see a lifesaver, they will remember your message. Last but not least, it is necessary that you evaluate. Gather your team and the people involved. Think about the mistakes you made. Evaluate costs and what you can do better next time. Also, think about how you can correct these errors so that in the next activity you can better reach the audience. Evaluate your audience, who you reached, did you reach the audience you wanted or was something missing in the communication? All this will allow you to improve on the next occasion. Do not be afraid to communicate with your audience as long as you are clear. What are the questions you are going to use? What is the concept and the means you are going to use so you can reach them at the right time? There are many ways to evangelize. Maybe many of us are accustomed to the traditional ways of doing this. I remember that when I was small, maybe I was eight or nine years, the church brethren would meet normally Sabbath afternoons to walk the streets and knock on some doors and deliver some books or magazines or some flyers and they would then come back for a white. Others would prefer to visit hospitals, nursing homes, and they would also visit the jails in the city. Nowadays, some of them still do this, and for me, this is a very loyable activity. As time went by, maybe I was 13, I discovered that the church used some communication means not written to carry the gospel. Even though I knew uh, radio stations and the Voice of Prophecy, it was in that period of time more or less that I realized that the church prepared some audiovisual material to present and explain their departments. And they created short films in 16 millimeter format for activities of Pathfinders. Of course, this was more in the United States, Europe, and Australia. For our times, little by little, God has demonstrated to us that the audiovisual world, the radio, television, video, and cinema, with so many technological advancements are tools, powerful tools that can be used for evangelism. But why? If this is true, and with cinema, if it's a good resource that we can use for this task, 
concretely, when we speak about cinema, normally we think about a place, a room where a lot of people come together, sit in front of a giant screen, and spend two hours, more or less, watching a movie. But the cinema is more than that. Let's break cinema into four fundamental aspects. And I hope that we have time for all of them. Okay, the first one, cinema is technique. We that know a little bit about this understand that for you to be able to make movies, you have to have some certain rules applied. It's 24 frames per second. There is a cinematographic language of planes, angles, frames, you know, digital optics, a whole bunch of terminology that take us to see the cinema as a technical activity. Many may have heard phrases like, it has a very cinematographic look. Well, this comes from the technique. Very well. In se the second point is that cinema is a place. And precisely as we said at the beginning, we know that this place with benches, a giant screen, popcorn, is what all or many of us call cinema. Now, the interesting thing is that currently technology also tells us that we can have a cinema at home. Or who hasn't heard about home theaters? This means that a very good screen, very good speakers, your comfy sofa at home and your microwave popcorn at home can be cataloged as a cinema. Even more, if you're with your friends and you decide to put a movie on the table of the park and you all get together close around the computer, well, there you have it, a portable cinema. It's not comfy and it doesn't have a surround system, but it transforms itself into a place where you watch a movie. The third, particularly for me, is one of the favorite concepts that I have. And it's the one that says that cinema is a narrative. It says that cinema tells stories, it narrates stories. When I teach script writing, I like to tell my students that film is basically composed of a narrative structure that theorists call a dramatic structure. It is the typical structure of stories that has a beginning, a development, and an end. A curious fact about this is that George Potley, a French author, wrote a book called The 36 Dramatic Situations. This man mentions that when a story is created, there are 36 dramatic ways to create these stories. The interesting fact of this is that the Bible includes all of these. Yes, effectively. If we study every story in the Bible, we there will find all these 36 dramatic situations. Just to mention some very quickly, we have rescue stories, we have crime persecuted for revenge, homicides, adultery, ambition. In fact, it's all 36 and they are all, all of them are in the Bible. So that leads us to think that the Bible is also narrative. And this is something very important so we begin to realize that cinema can be used for evangelism. This is why the fourth point is fundamental. And it is that cinema is also a tool. It's also a tool for communication. We cannot, we cannot deny the cinema as a powerful means of communication through which you can transmit values and counter values that, as Alfonso Mendy said, a teacher of communication of audiovisuals, he said these are values that contribute evidently to changing our belief system. It is very important to know that cinema is not only one of these points. It's all of these four. Cinema is technique, cinema is a place, cinema is a narrative, and cinema is also a tool. Nowadays, many can say that religion has transformed into a ritual and all of these ideologies have reduced the faith of people. But there is something that they will never leave as a fount of living water, and it's the art of telling and listening to stories. Jesus knew this, and this is why he took and led people through parables. Now, if we all recognize that cinema has a great capacity to influence people, it can influence their attitude, why do not we use it to tell stories with values and styles of positive lives? Why don't we use it as Jesus used parables telling stories that will reach out to people and have them identify themselves with it and know of the hope we have? Our most important mission is in Mark 16, 15. Go through the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We must use all of the tools that God has provided for this mission and ask that he will always guide our steps so that others can know him. Thank you. Visualizar el canal de Hope Channel Interamérica en tu dispositivo móvil es fácil y sencillo. Para descargar la aplicación, ve a la tienda de Apple o Android en tu celular. Escribe en el buscador Hope Channel. Una vez instalada, abre la aplicación. Seguidamente selecciona en la esquina superior izquierda la opción Menú. 
Dirígete a la sección de ajustes, presiona la opción de canal y selecciona Hope Channel Interamérica en español. Finalmente presiona Aceptar. La aplicación te dirigirá automáticamente a tu canal. Disfruta y comparte Hope Channel Interamérica, construyendo puentes, transformando vidas. Hope Channel, transformando vidas.